can you kind of just take us through the process of, you know, maybe the hours leading up to the draft and then kind of how it unfolded for you guys? Yeah, we were, um, you know, the 13th pick was in play all over the place. Uh, move up, move down, move out. Uh, part of bigger trades. Um, I think uh, what happened in front of us certainly impacted the value of 13. Uh, there's a couple guys that were likely top 10 picks that dropped, um, and then they were uh, selected the picks you know, right before us. Uh, we didn't see a huge drop off in, in the tier between 13 and, and the early 20s. Um, we, we've had some success in the past with taking multiple swings, um, and it was a divided room uh, at 13. Um, so we had a chance to guy add a guy like Trey Lyles. We had um, in the top 10 two years ago. I thought he had an excellent rookie year. Um, Last year, he wasn't able to kind of build off that success, uh, change role, um, diminish role to some degree, but I think his ability to play both front court positions, uh, his, his age, he's only 21, he's the same age as many of the guys going to see me. Um, big enough to, to play five. Um, I think he's a high IQ guy, can make shots, um, and as a, again, is able to move the ball, kind of play the way we, we like to play. At 24, um, we, we think there's just such a uh, dearth of, of Two position guys who can shoot. Um, a line has a rare combination of shot making, size, and, and some rim protection. Um, so I, I think, as we saw last year, Nicole's unique skills. If you have if you have a high IQ, you can make shots, and you're willing to be a ball mover, you can have success. I think Lydon fits all those things. In the second round, we were really excited about Black El Chanchar. He's a guy we follow closely. Um, we're very familiar with his his mega club outside Belgrade. Uh, a guy that's not auto eligible. For two years, hopefully we're a little ahead of the curve. Six eight playmaking, small forward. He'll play hopefully for the Slovenian national team this summer. Uh, we, we like his profile, we like his work ethic, uh, and, and we like uh, again the combination of size, shot making, and playmaking. And as a young kid, so he's going to stay overseas to get better and see what happens. And then at 51, quite frankly, we were surprised that our board still had a couple guys we were high on, um, kind of bubble first round guys, with the. Additional roster spots that allows us the flexibility we didn't have in years past. Uh, Monte Morris is, uh, you know, a true point guard, which is kind of a dying breed of player. Uh, unbelievably trustworthy with the ball. All the background stuff is fantastic. We're we're pretty close to the Iowa State program, uh, so he was pretty exciting. Uh, kind of a late burst uh, to the evening for a pick that uh, we did not expect to select. Quite frankly. Tim, do you see any of the three contributing in a meaningful way this coming season? Uh, that's yet to be determined. I think Trey Lyles is certainly the, the, the most likely. I mean, he's a guy that's played a lot of minutes for um, a playoff team. You know, I think he's, again, his flexibility is what makes him unique. But we have a crowd at front court, a competitive front court, so it's going to be up to him to, to earn his stripes. But I, I think uh, Lighting, certainly Blocko will stay overseas. Uh, again, Monty. On table, it will be um, a guy that will take a hard look at summer league. Uh, the flexibility of two additional roster spots is really beneficial with a guy like Morris. So, I think uh, long answer, short. I think uh, Lyles is a guy that can um, step into uh, rotational minutes and, and make an impact. With Wilson, Kenneth Fareed, Darrell Arthur, now Lyles, you're facing again the same kind of problem, which is that you're overly stacked at, at that position with not a lot of separation between the players. Is that something that you plan to address this summer? With yeah, we, yeah, we'd love to uh, make our roster a little cleaner. Um, you know, the, those conversations were pretty active tonight to, to have a, uh, a more traditional, you know, too deep at each position. Uh, but I, I think we, when we analyze this evening, we, uh, we think oftentimes the biggest indicator of success, especially at draft time, is more swings at the bat. I swear, uh, to play, excuse me, and we thought the ability to pick up, we think, a lottery level talent who has some experience in addition to a guy like Blyden who we're pretty high on. Um, while it does not address any, um, some of the roster jumble that we certainly have to address in the coming weeks, we thought it was too good to pass up um, an opportunity to have two guys like that. But yeah, we, we have some work to do. Uh, it's not a balanced roster, and we have to figure out um, how to make it a, a little more predictive and who's going to play and who's not going to play. Can you speak to how deeply engaged you guys got in any kind of trade talks this afternoon? Yeah, we had a lot. Uh, some were leaked. <laughs> um, uh, we, we were very far along one. Um, I mean, the dots we thought it was done. Um, and then 
uh, the 11th hour, one of the teams involved had a change of heart. So I think while we had countless conversations, there was one in particular that we thought had effectively been, you know, was going to take place. And you know, it's never a deal to have a, a handshake and a deal, and we never got to that point. But um, I mean, draft went through so many conversations. Um, Fewer substantive. In this one instance, it was pretty far along. Would you have applied for Jimmy Butler? Or? Uh, we, we talked to. If you got trades tonight, we probably talked to you about. Um, we were played for a lot of guys, but um, specifically, we we'll only comment who who we did get or who we didn't get. We got we got Trey Lyles. Tim, were you disappointed that that you couldn't get a deal done? Yeah, I mean, I, I think certainly some of the things we talked about, we were the aggressors, so. With that in mind, you're hopeful and you guys got your fingers crossed, but um, deal making it is a delicate balance and it's frustrating when you feel like you have a good deal for not just your team, but other teams involved and it, it falls apart um, on the one yard line. So there's certainly frustration when those conversations seem to be going in a direction that's going to end up in a deal, but it doesn't happen. You know, move on. Uh, it's a long night and, and you, you, you can't control those things, but certainly the competitive part of you, when you think you have a deal that can make your team better doesn't uh, get done. There's some frustration. Why didn't uh, play that zone in Syracuse? How do you guys think he projects? Like, is a man-to-man -man defender, pro level, sliding his feet and all that? I think it'll be a big challenge when uh, Syracuse, the transition is traditionally difficult. I, and I, I like his rim protection. I like his athleticism. I think he has the physical tools to be a good defender. But it, it's, it's always a challenge when you leave a zone-heavy team. And I think that they've experimented more and more. Um, Get down the zone a little bit. He has again. He has the length. He has the size. He has athleticism, uh, and he's got a guard. You know, you can't hide guys in the NBA. I think his rim protection is um, is encouraging. A guy that's not afraid to to challenge guys at the cup. So um, you know, he'll be thrown to the fire in summer league. And we'll see what his deficiencies are, and we'll work on him to get better. The guy's a tireless worker. So whatever he's going to be, he's going to be because he lives in the gym. I think you said last year that you learned something new kind of every year going through this process. What well, it was a weird night um, because the the frenzies came and then it was quiet. You know, it was a really bizarre night for 20 minutes. Phones ringing off the hook, and then nothing. And then 20 minutes, phones ringing off the hook, and then nothing. So it, it, the the kind of the ebb and flow of this evening was dip, was very different than most drafts I've been associated with. Um, I think um, the, it was unique. There were some really big names in the market. So. They kind of paralyzed some of the other conversations on the peripheral. Um, so it, it was a, it's always a fun night, um, but it, it was a, a funky night. Tim, what mock drafts had you guys taking OG and OG at 13? What was, what was your thinking behind rather taking, take, trading for Lyles and moving back to 13? Yeah, he's a, he's a talented guy, a guy that was um, very high on our board. Um, our thinking in trading back was we didn't see a huge separation in the overall talent level from 13 to 24. Uh, so we, we thought that we could add two pieces. Um, it, it would be better than adding a piece at 13 in, in very much divided room. Um, we had done so many mocks and we knew that I think after the, the first six were locks and I think they were four of the next um, four of the next six were likely locks not to be there and then I thought the draft began. So some teams 11 might have been someone else's 21 so we gambled a bit. Um, we thought that um, with the ability to take two guys, you can never have enough talented players. I think it increases your flexibility. Um, so that, that was kind of our thought process. With the trade that you discussed, was the option of trading entirely out of the draft, or was that the first round on the table? Well, we discussed a lot, though. I think the one that was closest to fruition was um, what involved our pick. I mean, we would have still been involved in the draft the second round, but it involved our lottery pick. Tim, how different is it now that you know you're playing through Jokic to go into a draft looking to draft not just best player available, but actually look to kind of like fit an identity of Billy Is that different this year? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I think we put such an emphasis on IQ. So there was, there, you know, when you go to select these guys, there were some really talented guys, but maybe they didn't have the same IQ that we felt that a guy like Trey has or a guy like Tyler has. And even the second round, I think Vlad Goen and Morris, you know, one of the first things they didn't know how to play basketball. Uh, we've had success uh, with Nicola. Um, I mean, he's uniquely talented, but he also has an innate instinct for the game. So I think these four guys know how to play basketball. You know, there's only so much you can teach. It's high IQ guys who understand how to play. It's, we've had success there, and we're going to continue to kind of focus on that, 
that skill set and hope it's translatable. <laughs> Hey, Tim, I know you guys have said you want to address defense this offseason. Do you feel like you addressed it at all tonight? And going forward into free agency, how much of a priority is that going to be? It's going to be a priority, but it's not just about adding guys. Our, our present guys have to be better. It's, it's unacceptable to be the 30th worst defensive team. I think we have guys on our team that took a step back individually as defenders last year. Um, uh, so I, I don't, we have to add some more defensive minded guys. Um, I think Trey Loss could be a good defender. Um, he's got instincts, he's big. He's got a, a feel for the game. I think uh, Leiden's challenge will be guard in space. But I, again, the, the rim protection's not a fluke. I, I think he's willing to mix it up. Um, I think uh, you know, Monte Morris is a guy that we it, it would be very slow with the development, but the, I think the guy can defend the ball. So I think it's a huge focus, but we also have to really challenge our present roster and say this is unacceptable. You got to be better. With Jimmy Butler being traded, not only traded, but traded in the division, has that added a little bit of pressure to uh, kind of combat that kind of notion, like competing to get better? Because it seems like, you know, they added that the Minnesota has stepped up another level. Do you feel that is, that kind of reflects your thinking going into free agency? We don't think so. Uh, we're on our own time frame. I think you know, we can't be reactionary and try to skip steps. As I said, we, we were involved in all these conversations, um, and it was flattering to see how um, how well thought of our assets were. Uh, but I, I don't think, um, especially watching the finals, we're a step away. So I think we have to be um, opportunistic and, and aggressive, but but not recklessly so. And kind of attempt to skip a step. I haven't seen that work recently. So um, I think it's a uh, Minnesota got way better. We got a heck of a player. Uh, but I, I don't think we'll ever be a team that's reactionary to what's happening around us.